Welcome, good evening. Welcome to the Charity Missionary Baptist Church. First Wednesday worship. First Wednesday worship is when we hear from one of our preachers. And so that they also get a chance to exercise the gift the Lord has given unto them. Tonight we hear from Minister Melvin Washington. As we open up, let us now go into the call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Altogether, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Looked all around, couldn't find nobody. Went down into the deepest valley, couldn't find no one, find nobody. I went across the deep blue sea, couldn't find none to compare. To your grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great. Nobody greater than you. I said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. 
I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody great, nobody greater, greater than you, stronger than you, powerful than you, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Our scripture will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, starting at the 17th verse through the 24th verse, the Amplified Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, starting at verse 17, ending at the 24th verse. Only let each one live the life which the Lord has assigned him and to which God has called him, for each person is unique and is acceptable for his choices and conduct. Let him walk in this way. This is the rule I make in all the churches. Was anyone at the time of his calling from God already circumcised? He is not to become uncircumcised. Has anyone been called while uncircumcised? He is not to be circumcised. Circumcision is, never, is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But what matters is keeping the commandments of God. Each one should remain in the condition in which he was when he was called. Were you a slave when you were called? Do not worry about that, since your status as a believer is equal to that of a freeborn believer. But if you were able to gain your freedom, do that. For he who was a slave when he was called in the Lord is a freedman of the Lord. Likewise, he who was free when he was called is a slave to Christ. You were born, you were bought with a price, a precious price paid by Christ. Do not become slaves to men, but to Christ. Brothers, let each one remain with God in that condition in which he was when he was called. God's word for God's people. We bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come on this first Wednesday in a new month, September, and we give you glory, we give you praise and honor. For you've been good, Lord, and we thank you. Thank you for our laying down last night was not in death, and our early rise was not at the judgment. But Lord God, you shined your light on us and you gave us brand new mercies. And so God, we thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come yet again to the house of worship, that we would give you honor and praise and all because you've done so much for us. Thank you for keeping us, even through these crazy times, through this pandemic, through the unrest, through the chaos. Lord, we thank you for keeping us, and we praise you. Continue to watch over us, Lord. Continue to keep us in the hollow part of your hand. Father, if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. And so, God, we thank you. Lord God, now, I ask you that you be with the man of God who's going to be bringing us the word on tonight. 
Father God, that will be a right now word, Lord God, to keep them. And then, Lord God, allow us to have the ear to hear and the heart to receive what you have to say to us on tonight. Father God, we we always need your word. We always need to hear a word. We always need to, to incline your word. Father God, we always need to know that there's a word from the Lord. And Father God, we thank you. Now bless us now as we continue to do what you've assigned our hand to do. Bless this church as a whole. Bless our pastor, Reverend Nelson B. Rivers III, our first lady, Sister Carolyn Rivers, and bless the charity church family. Lord God, we are waiting the day that we can come back in the house where we can greet each other and love on each other. And we can testify that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would know where we'd be. So, Father, we thank you now and we praise you now. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's offering time, time to give back God a portion of what he's blessed us with. Although it's Wednesday night, we still can give and we should give because he has truly blessed us. Father God, we come now, Master, to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you've given us, Master God. Jobs to be able to give back to you. Oh God, we thank you, God, for even the check that comes in the mail to us. Oh God, we thank you, God, for being our God, because we can't beat your giving no matter how hard we try. So bless all those that will give. And let them give from their heart now, my master God. And truly we are grateful. In the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
Our Father God, we come thanking you for another day. Lord, we bless your name right now. But Lord, we also want to give back to what you've given us. Lord, lift us often in a special way. Let it be used for his intended purpose. Lord, it's all for you and not for us. That is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
First, I would like to say giving honor to God who is the head and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his love and dying on the cross for all our sins. First, I'd like to give honor to Pastor Rivers and his absence, First Lady Rivers, uh, the clergy, uh, deacons, deaconess, and the waiting congregation. And I'd like to also give a shout out to my wife that's sitting in front of me. Thank you for being here to support me. But there is a word from the Lord. And if you would go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, beginning, my key verse is going to be the 17th verse of the, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And it reads, only let each one live the life with the Lord has assigned him and to which God has called him for each person is unique is accountable for his choices and conduct let him walk in this way this is the rule I made in all the churches let the church say amen Let us pray. God, our Father, I thank you for allowing to use me this, this evening, God. Oh, speak through me to your people. That they may, edify, may be edified and you be glorified. For it's in your son Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. If I had to tag a title on these particular passages of scripture, my subject would be God's calling. God's calling. I just sang a little bit of this song. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God's calling. In this book, Paul addresses a variety of problems in the lifestyle of the church at Corinth. They were dealing with lawsuits, immortality, abuse of the Lord's Supper, and of spiritual gifts. In verses 17 through 24, Paul speaks about abiding in God's call. Here, he shared words of counsel about the calling on their lives. He advised them to continue in the state and condition in which Christianity found them and which they became converts. Paul lays down in verse 17 a general rule as God has distributed to everyone. God setteth up, God pulleth down. As the Lord has called everyone, so let him walk in that calling. Whatever circumstances or conditions you were in when you was converted to Christianity, Abide therein. The duty of every Christian is to suit his behavior to his condition of the call. To be content with his lot and conduct, conduct himself 
in his rank and place as a Christian. It matters not whether a man be Jew or Gentile, being circumcised or uncircumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing but keeping the commandments of God. Let each person lead the life God has called him and to fulfill that which he has planned for your life. God has not called us to a social position, but to conversion itself. Becoming a believer does not require a change in status. We are bought with a price that we not be slaves of men. You see, the Lord Jesus has invested in us, and we have a high calling on our lives. The word call or calling occurs some 700 times in the Old and the New Testament. It means to choose out for oneself. God calls us to be before he calls us to do. This can be hard for most of us to be in our calling because we want our own way. We want to do what we want to do. We want to become what we want to become. God, however, has different ideas about what we should be and what we shall become. We must be willing to accept the situation or condition in which God has placed us. It's a transition to live differently as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and to be different in our walk. Content and satisfied lives, not lives characterized by envy, ambition, or a spirit that is critical and complaining. The Lord is certainly calling men and women to serve him in this day and time that we live in right here on earth. We should take heed to his voice as well as his plan for our lives, that we be effective in our calling to which we have been called. You may have heard the Lord tell you to do something or to help somebody, but before you attempt it, ask for his wisdom and his guidance to accomplish it. Knowledge and understanding of the word you and I must have, along with preparation time to be an effective witness in our calling. With faith and preparation, our work should precede what he has called us to do in our calling. It is an honor to be called to be than to do, for it is a greater service that we do through our being. Are y'all going to talk back to me? For the calling is what God is doing in us. Not we are trying to do for God. God has called us to serve him where we are and to bloom where we have been planted. Our call can be based on our situation condition or circumstances to serve in our calling to God. Don't you rely on religious ceremony or rituals, but rely on God's calling in your life through Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? Uh, God never promised the uh, happiness in serving, uh, in our calling. Uh, know our lives not to be 
difficult. Uh, he has promised us joy in our service of our call and that never leave us or forsake us. Uh, are you serving him in your call where you are right now? Are you been called and you've been drafted in the heavenly team of believers? Uh, our calling uh, is to serve the, his plan and not to seek uh, his blessings for our plan. Uh, God is a different plan uh, for us and his plan uh, not be what we think. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, let us serve uh, in obedience uh, to where he has called us. Uh, our comfort uh, in the world uh, is not God's concern. Uh, but it is our obedience uh, to our call and service. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, Mark chapter 10, uh, 49 verse 6, Jesus called uh, blind Bartimaeus uh, to come to him. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, Luke 19 uh, verse number 13. Uh, says Jesus spoke about a certain nobleman uh, who called ten of his servants uh, and gave them ten pounds, uh, $64,000 today's money, to trade with uh, John, uh, chapter number 11, uh, 28 verse says, uh, Martha went her way uh, and called Mary her sister. Uh, to tell Jesus, tell her Jesus that uh, had come and calleth for her. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, First Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, uh, verse number 7 uh, says, For God has not called uh, us to uncleanness, uh, but unto holiness. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, Galatians. Uh, chapter number 5 uh, and verse number 13 uh, says, For brethren, uh, ye have been called uh, unto liberty, uh, only not uh, for liberty as an occasion to the flesh, uh, but love to serve one another. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, we cannot uh, become so self-absorbed in our own thinking uh, and desire uh, that we miss what uh, God has for us. Uh, we are called uh, a chosen people, uh, a royal priesthood. Uh, so let every man uh, and woman uh, wherein uh, he or she is called uh, abide therein with God. Uh, for whom the Son uh, sets free uh, is free indeed. Uh, take heed uh, to God's calling on your life. Uh, I said take heed uh, to God's calling on your life. Uh, for God has called us uh, out of darkness uh, into the marvelous light. Uh, take heed. Uh, to God's calling. Wherever you are, whatever you've been going through, God said, the struggle is over for you. You've been in this place long enough and your mountainside has been run the struggle is over for you wherever you watch yeah 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 ever you've been go said struggle is over for you 
long enough yeah, and your mountainside has been rough the struggle is over the struggle is over the struggle is over for you the struggle is over Struggle is over For you, your heartache is over mm -hmm. The heartache is over For you Those crying nights and those lonely tears The struggle is over For you that season is over And your waiting is over For you The struggle is over For you You've been in this place long enough your mountainside has been run but the struggle is over for you you've been in this place long enough and your mountainside has been rough, but the struggle is over for you. This is a time that you can come. If you don't know Jesus for the pardon of your sin, come. You can come by candidate or water baptism. You can come by letter. You can call the number on your screen. The church, Charity Missionary Baptist Church, or you can call our pastor, Pastor Nelson B. River, the third. Accept Jesus as your personal Savior this day. You do not know him for the pardon of your sins. There's never a better time. Come. Just as you are. Come. Will there be one? Will there be one? Benediction. Everyone, please stand where you're at in your home. Now, may the word of God, the love of Jesus, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us hence now and forevermore. Let everyone, every heart say amen. 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 Good night.